Hi, my name is Kirby Miller, and I am an author, entrepreneur, and lover of people. Hmm. To be present in my life is the greatest privilege. I have a quote that I love that says, be where your feet are. Sounds simple, but it literally has changed my life. To be present means that you're actually honoring the moment and you are open and trusting what that moment has for you. And it shifts your mindset on everything. And for me, for many years, I spent time on autopilot, just doing the things, going through the motions. But being present really means coming into the moment, understanding that that moment is for you, and it really changes your worldview. So that might sound really easy to say, just be present, but it takes a little bit of work. Sometimes we're 20 minutes down the road or living 20 years in the past in our minds. So for me, I have some, some tricks, some tools that help me pull it together and come in the moment. And one of those is breath work. One thing is you can't forget your breath at home <laughs> and it's free. Just really being mindful of my breath and feeling that experience and holding it and releasing those things that feel heavy and really just honoring my body's design, honoring the fact that that breath brings life, but paying attention to it really pulls me into the moment. That's one of the tools in my toolkit. Another one is just to, in that moment, no matter where I find myself, notice some things. We kind of go through the motions sometimes. And for me, I sometimes just close my eyes and I take note of what I can hear or I take my eyes off of what I'm really focused on and just look around and notice some things that maybe don't map to the immediate goal, but just take note of my surroundings. Those things kind of help me be present and it's really beautiful. There's just an immediate calming that happens and it puts you back in the driver's seat of the moment. So those are a couple of my tools that I love to help me become more present. To be a firefighter, first word that comes to mind, courage. To be able to face something head on that may feel bigger than you, but understand that you have the tools and the authority to kind of wrap around that situation and gain some control. In my own personal life, there have been so many fires. There have been fires that I've wanted to put under a pile of things. There have been fires that I've wanted to run away from. But being a firefighter means finding that courage, dialing into the resources that I have, and being courageous enough to ask for the resources that I need to manage that situation, to manage being a firefighter, to manage the situation that could just burn out of control. So to me, it's really taking that authority and that autonomy in the situation and facing something head on, knowing that there's better on the other side of it. To be an author, to put that pen in your hand and understand that I am in a story, but I'm also writing a story, that knowing literally shifted my life. Uh, I found myself in a situation where I was on the other side of a phone call that delivered some really terrible news. And from that moment forward, I just had that, ins that instinctual knowing that nothing would ever be the same again. And I understood that in this moment, I had the opportunity to either shatter, which I did, spoiler alert, but then also to come back together and write a new story with new characters, with a new storyline, something that I hadn't prepared for, but understanding that there was beauty in that breaking. And that breaking could be a part of my story that not only made me a better person, but could also help other people. So there's another quote that I love that says, write your purpose in pen and your plan in pencil. And that quote came online for me during that time when I had to reauthor my story, when I had to honor the pain honor the hardship that I was in, but also trust that there was beauty and there was hope on the other side of it. So being an author means being honest, taking it all in, understanding where you are, but still being hopeful for where you want to be and using that power to write a new story to build a bridge from where you are to where you'd want to be. Being a pilot, that's the type of career that we all grow up respecting and, oh my goodness, you've got all these lives in your hand. And we kind of put that greatness in someone else. When I think about being a pilot in my own life, it has this air of excellence and boldness and having the right skill set to get where I'd like to go. And oftentimes we give that power away to other people and certifications and degrees and relationship statuses. But being a pilot in my own life, what that means to me is I've got it. It's here. 
It's been here all along. Now I can cultivate those skills, I can cultivate those things to help me, but being a pilot really is such a beautiful experience because it returns me to myself. It helps me to know that I have everything that I need to be in that position of excellence, to be in that position of guidance, and to be in that position where things may not always be perfect. We're gonna hit turbulence, there are gonna be a few storms, we might have some rowdy passengers along the way in this life, <laughs> but being a pilot means that you can handle it all and you can soar to heights that you could not imagine otherwise, and it's just beautiful to know that in my own life, I can help myself get there. When I think about being a manager, in full honesty, that first feeling is, hey, I don't wanna have to manage anything else. Most of us operate kind of near our fill line most of the time, and we are tempted to go on autopilot. We're tempted just to do the same things. Being a manager has a certain air of responsibility, and you have to kind of keep your head on a swivel, pay attention to what's going on in the moment, and be adaptable. When I sink deeper into that, that initial resistance feeling turns into responsibility and honor. To be able to manage my own life is something that has emboldened me to take different leaps and strides. And when I think back to that concept of being a manager, when I had to actually put myself in that position, it was on the other side of a tragedy. And what that taught me was life is fragile things can change. And in that moment, I actually was thrust into a position where two people I loved were no longer going to be able to manage their own lives. And it shifted in a moment. And so that feeling of resistance turned into honor and privilege. Every day that I get up and I can put clothes on my own body, I can decide who I spend time with. I can decide, hmm, this thing inside of me can come out and I have the tools and the people and the resources, I better be about the business of doing that. So I wanna give space for people who might think of, I don't wanna manage anything else. You're not alone. I've had that resistance before, but I want you to, to share in that wisdom from what's happened in my life to know that really it's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to wake up and manage your own life and then give that authority and autonomy to other people. When I think about being intentional, what comes to mind first is purpose and being on purpose and in your purpose. Similar, kind of first cousins, but different. Being intentional kind of weaves together so many other concepts because I believe that you cannot be intentional without being present because you have to know where you are and know where you're going. Being intentional means that you've also had the boldness and the courage and the time to sink deeper and understand why you're here and what you have to offer. And being intentional also means taking the steps to, to do those things, no matter what that might look like to other people, no matter if that doesn't make sense to other people. Being intentional means being on a path that's your own, being on a path that is authentic being on a path that allows you to be the highest version of yourself. That's what being intentional means to me. And when I think about that concept, it brings to mind a light. When someone is intentional and in their purpose and on purpose, they don't have to do anything else to impress. They don't have to do anything else to guide. That just naturally happens. So when I think about being intentional, I believe it's one of the highest honors that we can have in this life. Now it's gonna cost you something because being intentional doesn't happen overnight. You're not gonna to go to your mailbox and say, oh, look, intention. <laughs> there are gonna be things in this life that you intersect with that ask you hard questions. There are gonna be things that happen in this life that question everything that you thought was possible, maybe even question people in your life, maybe question your purpose in life. And so being intentional, in my experience, is gonna cost you something, but the outcome of that is beautiful. The outcome of that is knowing that your contribution matters. And isn't that what we all want? To know that this life, this energy, the things we do, that they matter. When I think about being agile, I've had a complicated relationship with that word. <laughs> In the corporate world, many of us be agile, be flexible, but in our personal lives, we are somewhat rigid. Through my life experience, I have fallen in love with this concept of being agile and flexible. 
And prior to this point in my life, I felt like leadership and being a strong person, maybe that agile part would bring too many questions. Like we have to have a plan. And if anyone's like me, I'm a recovering, you know, plan A, B, and C. But being agile to me is the highest form of leadership. Being agile also means that you have a lot of personal wisdom and authority you trust that in any situation you find yourself, that you will be able to handle it, that you will be able to not only manage it, but overcome and enhance. So being agile, being flexible for me, oh my goodness, it has changed my life, probably lowered my blood pressure a little bit too, because we're not in control of the external factors, but being agile means that, hmm, I can be here, I can be present, I can be open. This grip, this white knuckling that I've had on life, if I'm honest, it hasn't served me. And what happens when I just release, when I'm open, when I trust every moment that I've been in before this has prepared me? for what I'm in, that shifts the dynamics. So being agile and being flexible is leadership and is also something that empowers other people in your life to know, huh, if things don't go according to plan, they may turn out better than what I've planned. So for me, I have a much better relationship with being agile and flexible. And to me, that means leadership and authority. When I think about being a lifeguard, I think about kind of a paradox. And here's what I mean by that. When someone needs a lifeguard, there's usually chaos going on. And the lifeguard isn't joining the chaos. They actually come into a strong sense of, I'm going to do what I've been trained to do. The situation needs someone who can be level-headed, needs someone who knows what's happening, and being able to have that trust that you are ready for that moment. And when I think about that, there are so many scenarios, big, small, in between, that you can encounter that make you feel like you are just drowning, that you cannot rise above. And being a lifeguard means that we take a look at that situation and we can go in with a certain level of assurity and trust and calmness for ourselves. And also being a lifeguard to me also looks at when someone else is in need, that you can show up and that you are not contributing to the situation in a negative way, but that with your calmness and your assurity and your skill set and your life skills, you can go in and actually be a meaningful part of the solution. So that's what comes to mind when I think about being a lifeguard. It's someone who has trained for a moment that maybe they hope they never have to use, but in life, we're gonna encounter our own personal situations and other people who need someone to rush in when other people may panic and when you may feel like you don't have the resources you need. That's what being a lifeguard means to me.